There are two things in this world that wait for no one. Justice and the fantasy news. Yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to an emergency fantasy news. And we're gonna go ahead and jump right on into it here because we've had some massive stories drop over the weekend and I'm not gonna let the fact that I should be finishing the Halloween special stop me from keeping you kind of informed on entertainment stuff for a specific genre. What am I, an idiot? And of these massive stories, the one that's made the biggest waves, at least in the mainstream, is the fact that apparently, yes, Henry Cavill is going to be setting down the medallion and swords of Geralt of Rivia and handing them off to Liam Hemsworth. Now, when I first saw this, I did actually think it was a prank. Some kind of like Halloween, ha ha ha, we're gonna not have Henry Cavill be the one leading the show that we marketed it as like his show that he campaigned to get created. But no, Henry Cavill seems to be no longer super passionate about this project that he so avidly campaigned for years ago, and he is doubling down on his DCEU endeavors. This is not completely surprising the more I think about it. There have have been rumors and headlines talking about Henry Cavill having issues with the writing for specifically the character of Geralt of Rivia. And the reaction to the first two seasons of Witcher, I know there are big fans of it, but it's been mixed overall and not as big a deal as I think many people were hoping it would be. The potential next Game of Thrones, it certainly has not achieved. There are people taking this to as extreme as the Witcher show is totally done and dead. I don't believe that. I definitely want to see what Henry Cavill is going to bring for season three, and I'll at least watch what Liam Hemsworth is gonna do for season four. That interests me, especially because he's an actor who has gotten some, obviously, big roles relatively to small actors, but he himself rarely has been allowed to be given the spotlight, and I bet he'll be bringing everything he can to try and prove he can fill these shoes. But that is obviously me putting as positive a spin on this as I possibly could. I don't think, like some people are saying online, The Witcher is just Henry Cavill's show, Many other actors and actresses, I think, throughout the two seasons, despite some writing issues, have given performances that deserve respect. But if The Witcher was a stool, Henry Cavill's charisma and public passion for the project has been one of the three legs. And whether or not Liam Hemsworth will be able to stand tall enough in the role to balance it all out, I'm not entirely sure. But I genuinely do wish him the best of luck. I don't get the mentality of the people who are like, him like why <laughs> the guy obviously is gonna want to do this well to help his career so i'll give it a couple episodes and if it's terrible shoot but if it's good all right let's continue on from there but the smallest contingent of people but the ones that i find the funniest are the people who seem to be genuinely mad at henry cavill over this which i can understand i guess if witcher is like your favorite show and you love him as the character but again there have been rumors of him having a pretty combative behind the scenes relationship with the show as a whole and with him apparently reaffirming his contract for superman you don't really know what he's being offered there and what other projects he's allowed to stay in with or not and if Henry Cavill did have to leave The Witcher to go and join up with the DCEU and he didn't fight super hard to stay in the show, I've never been in the position where someone's offering me five, six, seven, eight figures. I don't know what's being thrown around for the role of freaking Superman. And so I'm not going to judge the guy and like not being able to say no to that. <laughs> I also just remembered that Henry Cavill a while ago was injured while filming The Witcher and as an actor who is so based in his physicality having a successful career, I could get that planting a seed in his head where these Witcher stunts could put me in danger and Superman, I just kind of do this and throw a punch maybe that's the better thing for me to think of now that he's approaching, you know, not old, he's still a young guy, but not the youngest guy anymore. I, does that make sense? Like, am I crazy in thinking that could also be a contributing factor? And with all these people throwing out possibilities of why Henry Cavill could be leaving, I'd love to put forward that it could be a mixture of all of them. With big projects like this, it often can take more than one reason for you to leave, and Henry Cavill could have just had a perfect storm lineup where he went, all right, I'm not loving where the show's going, I'm being offered this great thing. Superman's gonna keep me in the double A list a little more securely than Geralt of Rivia would, and 
I gotta look out for my future as an actor, so I'm gonna go do that. With all that being said though, of course, I'd love to know what you think in the comments down below, whether or not you're gonna keep watching The Witcher or not, with it possibly changing actors. I ran a poll on Twitter, which I haven't seen the results of yet, but it's up there right now. And does that result surprise you? Let me all know in the conversation down below. And it is going to make watching season three when it comes out next year a little bit awkward, because all the fans that do enjoy Henry Cavill's performance are gonna be like, oh, this is such fun. I'll get ready for whatever next time brings. <laughs> but moving on from there, we had some big old Wheel of Time news as well, because Orbit posted to Twitter saying, Feast your eyes on the deluxe limited edition of The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. Out on the 8th of December and available exclusively through the Orbit UK store. Pre-order it now for just 85 euros. Secure yours today, not available in the US or Canada. Hey, Orbit, I'd like to have a really quick conversation Conversation. Now, I understand shipping things overseas uh, and when you're based out of the UK for the printing it is expensive. And when things are already kind of having a big price tag, hey, 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 I'm talking. Pay attention, please, Orbit. Um, it, it can be really, really frustrating uh, to see people complaining about how high the price has to be for shipping and everything. But I think it could still be beneficial to you to reach out to. Why, why, are, you, why are you trying to pick up that phone right there? Put the phone down. I'm, I'm just trying to have a conversation with you right now. So I'm just trying to say like, if, if you send it out to some people who maybe regularly review limited editions and they've previously maybe really like not loved some limited editions or special editions or anniversary editions or a similar series uh, put out by a different publisher, your competition, and then you sent them a limited one, got a review that was even just mildly positive, uh, that would be a good business choice because a lot of people in their audience would probably really like to see that. And if they saw a positive review of the limited edition and the person was especially like known for being a big fan, um, that would be something that would be a worthwhile investment. So that's just, it's just a thought experiment, really. I'm not expecting to hear from you or nothing. Um, I, I do want to just say thank you for giving me your time and I look forward to your email. Next news. We also got some big old self-publishing news within the sci-fi fantasy space with some SPFBO finalists. That's right, if you wanna see who actually won the award this year, come in for Friday's fantasy news. But today I'm happy to tell you that the finalists are. Wait, 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 wait. I've had people complain about this before because I've always gone into the SPFBO news without fully explaining what it is. And some people are like, what the hell are you listing off? This is awards given specifically for self-published fantasy sci-fi books. So it's the self-published fantasy blog off where a panel of qualified judges come together to pick a winner and it's just the self-published community trying to help itself out. If you want to help indie authors, looking into buying one of these finalists is a great way to do so and you have a general inkling that they're going to be pretty good if they're finalists in the SPFBO, but the finalists are Scales and Sensibility, Tethered Spirits, A Torch of Light, Fire of the Forebears, Small Miracles, The Thirteenth Hour, Mysterious Ways, The Umbral Storm, A Song for the Void, and yes, tune on in for Friday's fantasy news to see who the winner is. Dun, dun, dun. <sighs> Next news. I might be an obsessive. I might be screaming into the void of no one caring, but this tickles my feathers, damn it, because Mike Flanagan in an interview with IGN again reiterated his wanting, his passion to eventually do a grand scale adaptation of the Dark Tower. Listen to me well, whoever owns the rights to adapt Dark Tower, a golden opportunity has just been squelched out on your doormat. One of the best directors, not only for horror in general right now, but also specifically having a proven track record for adapting Stephen King, is adamantly, repeatedly speaking on the fact that they have a ton of passion to do a great adaptation for this for the fans. If the man who brought us Midnight Mass, Gerald's Game, Hush, and Doctor Sleep isn't able to get moving gears going so that he can bring us the Dark Tower story as we the fans fans fucking deserve it, how could it possibly be done?
Ow, my hand. <laughs> Turns out cans are sharp. I swear on all that is holy, if within the next six months, we do not get Mike Flanagan helming an adaptation of a big budget Dark Tower series for some streaming service, I will come to just Hollywood as a whole and take your sign. Okay, but let's go ahead and finish off this fantasy news with fantasy schnooze. Okay, but let's go ahead and finish off this fantasy news with two pieces of good quickie news. One, Jeff Goldblum is apparently in final talks to join Wicked's movie as the wizard. I recently saw Wicked on stage here in Richmond with Kayla and that became like a core memory for our relationship. It was so much fun, such a good show, amazingly talented cast. And Jeff Goldblum and the wizard, Sounds fun, I'm down. And in news for something I am so happy, looks pretty damn good, we got a trailer dropping for the new Willow, original series streaming November 30th, my birthday, on Disney Plus from Lucasfilms. And I'm really happy to say that this looks pretty damn good, especially because it seems to be filling a part of the fantasy market I've been a little bit concerned by recently, and that's like epic fantasy made for kids. I haven't seen too many like epics launched aimed at kids that were of any kind of quality, and this looks pretty darn nice and is absolutely still maintaining Willow being aimed at a younger audience, not trying to like grow it up with the fans, which I think would be pretty inappropriate with this series. And so I'm usually very hesitant to compliment Disney Plus, but this one, if it turns out to be what it's marketing itself as, I like how they did that. Hashtag Disney still must pay. They don't pay their writers right. F you, Disney. Boom, I'm out. Took it the other way at the end. <laughs> But this has just been your latest episode of Fantasy News. Like and subscribe if you have not already, and hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. I got books, I got merch, and hopefully I have a Halloween special dropping Tuesday. Have a good one, y'all. Bye!